Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today is my birthday. Yes, the 24th is my birthday. Um, this video is gonna go up the day after, but I would honestly rather be spending no other time than filming for my Lone Fox channel. I've just been obsessed with creating projects, room makeovers, filming videos lately, and you guys, the response on my last room makeover video is absolutely insane. If you have not seen it, make sure to go click the card up here and watch it after you've watched this video, of course. But today we're gonna be doing a super, super fun and very budget-friendly project project for you guys. I'm going to be talking all about weaving on a loom and we're actually going to be creating a DIY loom ourselves that literally costs only a couple of dollars to create and then we're also going to be creating a pillowcase and a wall tapestry hanging and you guys these literally turned out amazing. I've already filmed them so I'm filming the intro after. I am obsessed with weaving. It's my new favorite thing I think. I absolutely love it and I also love how you can literally make somebody like a birthday present on a very affordable budget. So if you are living on a budget, create yourself a DIY loom, watch this video, make your friend a wall hanging for their birthday because it's literally going to cost you a couple of dollars to create but in their mind if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel and also turn on that little bell notification next to the subscribe button because i post brand new videos on home decor and diy every single week and you can also follow me on instagram if you would like it is lone fox home and then my personal fashion account is i'm drew scott which i'll put on the screen as well for you guys and i also want to give a humongous shout out to with wendy which is another amazing diy and like fabric just sewing youtuber here on youtube and also schmod i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his username obsessed with both their channels and they did absolutely amazing weaving videos over on their channel and I definitely drew a ton of inspiration from them so I'm going to link their videos below because if you want to actually learn from like like real professionals please feel free to check out their videos because they tell you a lot of different stitches a lot of different um weaving technique they use all the right terminology I'm just kind of going off what I know and what I've seen so I think we should just get into creating the loom because honestly it's kind of fun to create the loom and you're going to see why in just a second To create the loom, I'm gonna be using an 18 by 24 inch painting canvas, and I got this at Michael's probably about a year ago. I never used it. These are super, super affordable, and I'm flipping the canvas over, and don't do what I'm doing here with the screwdriver. I actually realized that you can literally just peel the canvas away from the staples and then use an X-Acto knife just to cut any excess areas that you need to kind of get rid of. But you can also keep this canvas if you want to, guys, once you peel it off of the base, so you have this essentially like a wooden frame. Um, you can keep that canvas and use it for future projects. Projects, but this is a wooden frame that we're going to be using to create the loom and then I brought out a ruler and I'm gonna be marking every 3 8 inch you can do every quarter inch every half inch depending on the thickness of your yarn depending on the thickness of what you want your weaving to look like I did mine every 3 8 inch and then what I did was I took just some little basic nails um, these are just like wall nails and I hammered them into every single hole across uh, the bottom and the top and this took me quite a while and I'm sure my downstairs neighbors were not very pleased about this but I need to make my loom you know so this is your finished loom once you have all the nails in the top and the bottom sections To start off any weaving project, you're going to want to start by stringing the loom, and I'm using a simple white thread that has zero stretch to it because you're going to want to make sure that this stays pretty tight the entire time you are weaving, and what we are creating here is known as the warp thread. So this is going to be the warp, and then the yarns that we're going to be weaving in are going to be the weft threads. So I'm going around each nail um, in sections of two and then pulling it to the opposite side, and I actually ended up stringing almost the entire loom just because the pillowcase is a bit on the larger side, so I wanted a lot of surface space to work with um, and just make sure that it's pretty tight but not too tight and then I cut a one inch wide section piece of cardboard which I'm weaving in and out and this is going to be a simple little um, kind of additional help with weaving so you're gonna weave this in and out and this is going to basically make it so that when you are weaving from right to left it's going to make it a little bit more easier so you're gonna flip it up and then it's going to create an opening between those threads and you can weave through super simply so when you're going from right to left super simple to just like put it all the way through but when you're going from left to right, as shown here, you are going to have to go every other thread. So 
So I'm weaving through what's known as the footer and I'm using the same exact string. This is just kind of a starting off point. You're gonna, you're not gonna wanna start off with yarn right away. I just like to have this um, because it kind of just makes it a nice little starting base point, if that makes sense. So I'm weaving through a total of, I think I did about 12 sections of this, 12 strands, but you can do it uh, however much you want. I just did this because I saw with Wendy, she used 12 as well. So I was like, I'm gonna do 12 too. So I wove through 12. This was sort of the starting base point of our weaving. You can cut off any additional thread and just always leave it hanging. And this is the color palette I'm going with for my pillow. So I'm going to start off with this really pretty apricot orange colored yarn. And I work in six to eight foot sections of yarn. So I cut off about an eight foot section here to work with. And I put it on my yarn needle. And what I'm doing is flipping up that little cardboard section in there. So it's super easy for us to just do our first thread through, which is going from right to left. Um, and you can just put it through and that cardboard kind of acts as a nice little guide for you to hold the threads apart as you weave through. Pull it all the way through, leaving about a six inch tail at the end. You're gonna want to have always long tails to work with and then using your comb just to comb it all the way down to the bottom. I don't pull my threads tight ever. I really like to keep them very loose, even on the edges. So don't pull them tight. Always leave a nice amount of kind of, see how that I have a loop at the end there? Never pull it too tight because once you start pulling that thread really tight, you're gonna start getting your weaving to kind of start shrinking towards the center. If that makes sense, it's gonna start getting really, really tight. So it's gonna start off wide at the bottom and get tighter as you get to the middle if you pull it very tight. So I always leave it super, super loose uh, because everything's gonna stay intact. So don't don't worry about that at all. Pillowcase is going to be super, super simple because I'm kind of just sharing with you guys the most simplest form of weaving, which is going to be just kind of strips or rows of yarn. So the thing I love about this pink yarn here is that it's super thick, it adds a ton of texture, and at the same time, the thicker the yarn, the quicker the weaving goes. So this three little stranded section took up almost a two inch section on my pillow, which I love. I'm now gonna be using a white yarn to add a couple of rows after that pink one, and then we're going to be creating what I like to call a bricked section. I just call them bricks, I don't know what they're actually called, but basically how you're gonna do this is you're going to weave to the center string and then weave back to the edge. So you're just not gonna weave all the way across. Super simple and easy to do. Uh, it's just gonna be half as much effort to create this brick, I guess you could say. So I'm just weaving this up probably about seven rows just so we have a good substantial kind of like oblong rectangle tangle to work with and you're going to see exactly what I mean by that in a second here. So I'm weaving all the way to the center point and then weaving back to the edge. And then once I have that done, I'm starting with an orange thread and I'm just gonna go and fill in the gap. So I'm weaving to the center point. And then I also like to just go in between the thread. So in between, as you can see here, that thread that kind of um, was the finishing point of the cream color. And you'll see those gap openings where it's supposed to go, it kind of puzzle pieces together. And I also went through and added a couple more strands of the orange. Grabbing this really beautiful white, very thick yarn, which I love because again, very quick and easy to weave with. I'm weaving through one strand of this, leaving a tail and then combing it down with my wide tooth comb. And then what I'm doing is a different kind of stitch for the section. So all you're going to do for this is you're going to skip every other warp thread and you're going to put your needle down through and then pull back up and it's gonna create this spiral section. So you can kind of see here, skipping a thread, going down and then pulling back up through on the opposite opposite side of the thread. And this is just going to pull through and kind of create a very pretty, almost knitted look to the tapestry. And this is just a very textural element, which I love because I think having tons of fun texture on these weaving projects really adds a ton of visual interest and of course texture.
So next what I'm doing is creating another textural element for you guys. This is just another sort of stitch you can do. So I went through and I added a couple rows of just a white weaving above what we just did. And then I'm using a wooden dowel, placing it down. And how you're going to be doing this looped section is you're going to be going down and up through the opposite thread, putting the loop over your dowel, and then pulling the yarn underneath and repeating. So as you can see here, I'm going to pull the yarn underneath that dowel and we're going to repeat. So you're going to put the thread through the next yarn, make the loop go over the top and pull tight. So this is going to be creating another sort of textural element on our tapestry. Super simple and easy. And once you get to the section that you like, you can actually pull your dowel out, but you are gonna wanna add a couple strands of weaving above that. So a couple rows of weaving above that, that's just gonna lock it in because you can't immediately take out the dowel once you get to the end or it will not work. So did a couple rows of this just to add a nice little bobbly texture. I think it's super cute and fun. And then I'm going to just kind of finish off my weaving here. I'm going through with a couple strands of orange, a couple strands of pink and white, just to kind of match my color palette. From here on out, guys, it's very, very just repetitive of what I've already talked about. So I'm doing a couple rows of white, a couple rows of pink. So once you're happy with your weaving and you love the way that it has turned out, we're actually going to be ending it the same way that we started it with 12 rows of that white thread, which is the exact same thing we did when we created that initial footer for the weaving. We're going to be doing 12 rows right up here just to finish it off. Standing on the roof of my fan, pain and everything. And you might be wondering what to do with all of those excess threads hanging off the lefts and the right sides. And what I do is I take the threads and I actually put it on the needle and I just weave it through the back side. So I kind of pick it up through a section. And since this is going to be glued down, you don't really need to tie them off. It's gonna be pretty secure just as is. But if you do want to, you can also tie them off with a neighboring strand. You typically do have a neighboring strand next to it. So I just tie them off on the back side with a square knot uh, just to make it super, super secure. And you can also add a dab of glue if you would like to those knots just to make them extra secure. Now everyone kind of has a different way to take your weaving off of the loom. I just simply take a pair of scissors, snip between the nail, and I do a square knot which is right over left, left over right. Just keep that in your head. That's a simple square knot. Um, so again, what I do is I take my scissors, I snip between the nail, right over left, left over right, and you're just going to repeat this process all the way down your loom on the top section and the bottom section. Once I got that off the loom, I actually added a tiny little dab of clear nail polish to each knot and that just secured the knot even more, but you can use glue if you like, or you can sleeve it as is. This is the finished woven tapestry pillowcase and all I had to do to actually attach it to the pillowcase was take a little white pillowcase that matches the exact size. As you can see here, it fits perfectly up on there. And I simply used Fabri-Tac on the entire backside. It secured it amazingly, so perfect and clean, uh, but you can also sew it down along the edges if you would like. So now we're gonna be creating the wall hanging. And as you can see, I've already prepared the loom with the warp thread and I've already woven in the footer section, but I'm now going to be creating a nice little tassel at the bottom of our wall hanging. How we're gonna do this is taking the middle section and stringing it up through the bottom of the loom as shown here. So you're gonna have a loop sticking out of the top and you're gonna take the left side of that tassel on the left side of the string and the right side over the right side of the string and you're going to pull through and that's just going to create a nice little tassel knot and you can pull it all the way down to the footer section. So I repeated this process all the way across to create these tassels. Now these are super, super thick, but if you do have a thinner yarn, you can kind of use multiple strands in one section. And 
from here on out, it is very, very, very similar to what we did with the pillowcase. I'm doing these same exact techniques. I'm going from left to right, using that cardboard section to make it easier on one side for me. Um, and I'm also gonna be creating a couple of bricked sections with this one. So then I'm going in with my yellow, filling in the gaps, pulling it through. And this yellow is just so beautiful. I love the way that it adds a pop. And then I'm also going to add this orange, which is just a nice little complimentary section as well. I think it goes nicely with that yellow. And of course, we cannot forget about our very thick sections, which make our weaving go so quick, which of course we love. And I'm also adding in a very, very, very dark gray, which I think adds such a nice contrast to this wall hanging. I love the way that it looked and it just added it in as I did every other strand from left to right, from right to left, wove it in to our lovely little wall tapestry. I think this turned out so beautiful in the end. It's in my room right now. I'm literally obsessed with it. And of course I had to create a little brick section here, which I will fill in on the left side with a little bit of a looping, which I shared with you guys earlier. In the middle of nowhere, it's just woke up to the sound of you Standing on the roof of my van You're painting everything around you And I can see you all day and watch you once you finish off your wall hanging, again, go through, add 12 strands of just your white warp thread that we used, and then tie off your tapestry at the top, as I showed with the square knots, and then add a little clear nail polish to those knots just to make sure that they're extra, extra secure. And then what I did was I simply took the, a needle and thread, and I sewed this on to a dowel just very randomly. There's no rhyme or reason to this at all. I just sewed it to the dowel simply, and then I added a string to the top, and that finishes off your wall hanging. It turned out amazing. So much texture and so much life in this piece. Just love to do and I'll always get caught up in your smile it brings me to the ground. And that was my little tutorial on weaving for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. I'm absolutely obsessed with the wall hanging. It is currently hanging in my room right above my computer over there and I legit love it. It's so pretty. It's so textured. It adds so much life to my space and I'm very, very excited about it. And I also love my little pillow I created. It's perfect. So these projects are just super cute and very customizable. And again, great projects, very budget friendly. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. So I won't keep you guys for much longer, but make sure to subscribe to my channel for more DIY and home decor videos every single week. And again, follow me on Instagram at Lone Fox Home and my personal one at I'm Drew Scott, if you would like to as well. And I will catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing day. And I'm going to go get back to celebrating my little birthday today at home DIYing which is where I love to be so I will catch you guys in the next one bye guys